Deborah Wilson, who has done new research into public perceptions of surrogacy and the laws surrounding it and has uncovered some surprising changes. Associate Professor of Law at the University of Canterbury, it's been a three-year research project with funding from the Law Foundation to find out what the public thinks and whether attitudes are changing. Her research is being used to inform law changes in the United Kingdom and may impact on a private member's bill. It's in the ballot here. Deborah Wilson said she was surprised by some of the findings, particularly regarding who the legal parents of the child should be. She's in the Christchurch studio, and Deborah, thank you very much for being so patient. Thank you. Good morning, Catherine. Do you want to go ahead and tell us what the main findings of the research was, and particularly those that surprised you? Well, what we realised when we started researching surrogacy is that although there's a lot of academics talking about some of the issues in surrogacy, nobody's actually sat down and asked the public what they thought. So we were we looked internationally, nobody's done a survey just asking the public what they think. And we realised that that was a major gap and we talked to the New Zealand Law Foundation and they agreed that if you're going to talk about reforming law, you actually need to know what people think. So we put together a... Um, random representative survey. Um, we used the electoral roll to make sure that it was as representative as possible. And we just basically asked people what they thought the law was and, and what it should be. And I kind of thought that maybe people would reach the conclusion that I'd reached, which is that a law that was written in 1997 is a little bit out of date for today. But I was really surprised at the responses that I got, the surprise from respondents when I said, this is what the law is, what do you think? There was a lot of, what on earth are you talking about? How can that be the law? And in situations where we simply just said to them, what do you think the law should be? It was very rare that they agreed with what the law currently is. What were the main things they disagreed with about the existing law? Um, so, well, one example is our, our existing law says that it must be altruistic surrogacy. So while the intended parents, who are the ones who are going to raise the child, can pay medical bills and um, counselling bills, no money can go to the surrogate at all. And so one question that we asked was, do you think the, the surrogate should be allowed to be reimbursed? We asked if she should be allowed to receive a cash payment for being a surrogate or receive a gift or be paid for reasonable expenses or nothing at all. And only 5% said that she should receive nothing at all, which is the current state of the law. Most thought that she should at least receive expenses, if not be allowed to have some kind of gift at the end. The law surrounding, and this is it's a, such a difficult language to use, the law surrounding parental rights, let's put it that way, um, because so much of our um, law now is understandably focused on the child's rights first. But when it comes to surrogacy and the rights of those who are involved, the woman who, who's the surrogate and carries the baby, uh, the parents, what's most pertinent there with respect to existing law and then tell me what people thought of it? Well, just how old our current law is. So our law, which talks about who the legal parents of a child are, is so old that it's actually described by the Latin maxim, mater certus imperest which basically means that the mother of a child is always certain because she's the one that gives birth. Right, so in surrogacy, the exact opposite is true. Right, the woman who gives birth is basically doing that so that the child can be raised by someone else. So in our, our current law, the legal parentage of this child born through surrogacy is the woman who gives birth and her partner if she has a partner. So the surrogate and, and their partner. So we asked, um, we asked in the survey, we gave them a scenario and told them you know, who all the relevant adults might be and said, who do you think are the legal parents? 52% um, of respondents said that it should be the intended parents. And they said, look, this is obviously the case. This is their child. The surrogate is just sort of a, a babysitter. And less than 5% actually said that the surrogate should be the legal parent. So is what happens now based very much on goodwill rather than law? It, it seems to be. Yeah, any sort of arrangement that you enter into is not enforceable. So at the moment, the situation is um, you enter into this arrangement, the intended parents and a surrogate find each other, agree to this relationship, and the intended parents basically just spend the entire time hoping that it works out. 
because once the child is born, they have to adopt the child to be legally recognised as the parents, and they can't do that unless the surrogate agrees. Right, so is that what would typically often happen here in New Zealand? There would, yes. Yeah, okay. Now, yeah, there aren't many cases where a surrogate does actually change your mind. Right. Um, I think it's in less than 1% of cases that we know of worldwide, compared to about 10% of adoption cases where the woman who gives birth decides she wants to keep the child. Right. But at the moment, it tends to move to a, legally, a, a legal adoption arrangement. And goodness, how old is that act, by the way? <laughs> 1955. 1955. With respect to the UK, and I apologise, it's just a couple of minutes for this, Deborah, but with mm. respect to the UK and New Zealand and what's happening, a member's bill, of course, in New Zealand depends on it being plucked out of the ballot. Right. Um, and what's happening in the UK? Is that a member's bill or is there a legislative change underway? No, it's a, um, it's a legislative change. So they're now on their third version of a surrogacy law because they realise that they have to keep updating. So their law commission has been told to recommend quite substantial changes. And that's the process that's going through at the moment. They're looking at just a complete re-overhaul. Who should the parents be? How do you best transfer parentage if you leave parentage with the surrogate during the pregnancy, should payments be allowed. So they're completely revisiting it, which is really great. And your research is going to inform that. In the case of the New Zealand Members' Bill, if you're fully familiar with it, were it to be drawn and go towards Parliament, what does it pro- uh, go into Parliament, what does it propose? Um, it just looks at an easier way of transferring parentage. So at the moment, for a lot of intended parents, the idea that they have to adopt this child that they consider to be their child is quite offensive or cruel after everything that they've gone through. It's also a long and lengthy process and there's lawyers and courts involved, so there's a cost involved as well. Um, this bill just looks at an easier way of doing what the parties are all agreeing to. You know, so the it doesn't involve legal it doesn't involve legal adoption, which may eventually come up for its own law reform anyway. Is it a different form of legal arrangement that it would introduce? I think that's the idea behind it, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah, and thanks again for waiting. Deborah Wilson, Associate Professor of Law at the University of Canterbury. She's led this three-year research project with funding from the Law Foundation to find out what the public thinks and whether attitudes are changing uh, towards surrogacy, and uh, she certainly found that they did since those held back in 1997.